Hey everybody, what's going on? Uh, this is Chase with TCG Bulk Kings and I'm just here sorting some Astral Radiance bulk. And I've been thinking about something and I decided I wanted to talk to you guys about it. Um, recently, just a few days ago, uh, Danny Fantov on his channel put out a great video um, called uh, The Death of Pokemon Bulk. And he brought up a lot of really interesting points. Uh, it's been percolating around in my head, and he's definitely been around a lot longer than I have. Um, among those points, um, he reported something I didn't know, um, that apparently last year, 2021, Pokemon printed 9.2 billion Pokemon cards, billion with a B. Um, now this is apparently about a 30% increase over the previous production of all Pokemon cards combined, or another way to say that is about 25% of all Pokemon cards that have ever been printed up to the end of 2021 were printed during 2021. That's a lot of cards, and not all of those are English, but still, that's a lot of cards. Um, so he's naturally worried about overproduction, uh, and he draws a comparison to uh, sports cards and comics in the 90s and how that bubble really kind of burst really hard. Um, he's also pointed out the fact that a lot of major bulk buyers have stopped buying uh, places like Safari Zone, uh, Troll and Toad. He said even he's considered stopping buying. He's been a major buyer, uh, especially for trade-in for sealed product. Uh, he showed some prices from a few years ago. Um, you know, bulk prices in Pokemon have dropped from about six cents per card down to where it's at now is about two cents per card if you can get somebody to buy it. Uh, and back when it was six cents a card, you could trade in 1,400 bulk commons and uncommons like these and get a whole booster box to replace it with. And now it's nowhere close to that, four or 5,000, I think. <clears throat> um, so those were some interesting points, but I feel like I've had a little bit different perspective or maybe a little bit different experience than he's had. Now again, he's a lot closer to the overall market than I am, but there are some other things to think about. Uh, Pokemon Bulk has, it has been and is and probably always will be expensive compared to other TCGs. Um, you can check out my bulk buy list comparison page after you finish watching the video, of course. I'll put a link down below it, uh, directly to that if you'd like to go check that out. But Pokemon Bulk, even at two cents per card, is far and away more expensive than any other TCG. Uh, Magic is three dollars per thousand. It's three cards for a penny. Um, it's the standard rate right now. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! has dipped from about $15 to about $10 per thousand, so one penny per card. Flesh and Blood is somewhere in between those with some of the overprinting that it's had lately in comparison with the, the size of its market. Um, so Pokemon is just much higher priced than uh, the other games. Oh, there we go. Um, now, there has been a huge amount of demand for Pokemon, as he stated, over the last couple of years, uh, and honestly, the demand at the top end for new sets hasn't dipped nearly as much as the demand for bulk has, and the way we see that playing out is that um, Pokemon has two choices for how to treat that. You know, people want their uh, alt art Machamps a lot more than they want this Drifloon right here, right? Um, <clears throat> Pokemon has two ways they can handle that. They can either increase the pull rates so that it's more common to pull those cards that people want and still print the same number of boxes, or option B, they can print more boxes and keep the pull rates the same which will keep the price point for the highest end cards relatively close to the same. Or they can print more boxes and keep the pull rates the same, which will keep the, 
which with the way demand works uh, in relation to that will keep the price of the desirable cards the same but the price of the other cards in the set will drift downward i.e. the bulk will drift downward I, I think that's probably a lot more desirable of an option for uh, uh, Pokemon to do is to print more boxes and deal with bulk prices going down rather than the other way around and print the same number of boxes and either do nothing and just have $1,000 alt art by chance or increase the pull rates which will decrease the value of everything across the board. Um, also, one of the things that Danny pointed out as an option for people to, uh, for, for what people do with the bulk when they pick it up, or what larger companies do with the bulk when they pick it up, the Gengar is really cool, uh, is, it, like, basically he talked about bulk lots as being the only thing that people do with the bulk, uh, which obviously I disagree with. Um, they're not the only thing you can do with low-end cards. Every card has value, obviously. Um, despite their lowly status, the demand continues to exist for the low-end cards. Um, on June 20th, which is a, a day or two before the filming of this, uh, 180 copies of Trekking Shoes were sold. That's an uncommon from this set. Uh, on that same day, the lowest demand card in the set, Drifloom, sold 23 copies. 23 copies sold on TCG Player of that card on June 20th. That's demand. That, that, that exists. There's, they're selling. People are buying them. There's an exchange of money that's happening. So... Bulk lots are not the only thing that people can do with them. There's demand for the individual single cards. So why don't I sell bulk lots? I, I actually don't sell bulk lots at all. Uh, occasionally I will sell bulk to a, another company or whatever, you know, when I'm getting rid of light play bulk or something like that that I don't feel like I can sell through my store. Um, but I don't sell like these lots on eBay or Amazon or even TCG Player. You see 100 cards guaranteed an ultra rare or guaranteed a mythic or something like that. I, I don't do that. And the reason why I don't do that is I wouldn't buy them myself. Uh, I, it always felt like it was a scam that I wasn't in on. Uh, even as a kid, I wouldn't buy those kinds of things. That My LGS as a kid, Mike, if you're watching this, hey, what's going on? Uh, had grab bags of um, bulk lots of uh, magic commons and sometimes old reserve list stuff was in there um, there was supposed to be a mox in the box as part of the draw to buy it but no, none of my friends ever opened a mox they got Temerian fiends and stuff like that um, anyway uh, I wouldn't buy those things myself as a kid either I only sell the bulk as bulk at the same rate that I buy bulk. Um, I don't make any money off of selling bulk as bulk. Um, I feel like there's much more value both to myself and to the community and the market in selling individual cheap singles. Um, I don't feel like the market is the same as 90s sports cards was or 90s comics was at that time. I don't even feel like those cards are at this, in that same market now because the demand has finally arisen to the point where those are relatively scarce compared to the amount of demand. Yeah, definitely have a look at that market to see what's going on there. Um, there's nowhere near the amount of overproduction relative to the existing demand as occurred back in the 90s for those things. Um, but in order to sell all these individual single cards, it's a process, it's work, you gotta love that work, and you gotta get good at it to be effective at it, or it's just gonna eat up your time and eat up your money. Um, so uh, remember, uh, but it doesn't take that much more work than actually selling bulk lots does, because 
you know, with bulk lots, you're still having to organize all these cards. You're still having to sort them out so that there's not repeats or not more than four repeats in each one so you don't get people to stop buying your bulk lots or leave negative reviews on your bulk lots and things like that. Um, so it's not that much more work. Remember, I'm always talking about these kinds of processes. This is what I do. It's how I arbitrage my time into money. You can check out what's going on here on my channel. I'm always trying to put out more and more videos about all that. Lots of great stuff coming up. You can always uh, see what's going on on my Patreon that I've recently started up. Um, that's going to be an ever-increasing uh, resource for people who are looking to do this kind of thing. Uh, I'm not going to say that it's the end-all be-all at this exact moment of all that information, but it's going to continue to build, and if you're part of the Patreon, you can help build that, process, that, that resource as well. Um, I have decent info about all this on my website which if you go look at the bulk buy list uh, page, you'll see a lot of that info. Um, if you end up in the uh, Patreon, we're having a Discord that we can all talk to each other and help each other out through there as well. Um, and you can also just watch this video right here for some more specific helpful tips about this topic.